I thought this was just interesting from the perspective of a, a historical perspective. Um, if you're not aware, I don't think I've really talked about this. A lot. I'm, I'm really nerdy about historical stuff, like how people lived in the past. I love looking at historic homes, seeing what life was like in previous generations. I'm really into that kind of thing. I find it fascinating. And I love learning how people lived in past times. I'm just like obsessed. So I saw this article and I just uh, thought it was very interesting. Okay, so at first you're like, okay, so there is this former Singer sewing machine factory in, Eliz I believe it's in Elizabeth, New Jersey. And let me, let me show you some of this. Okay, so this was this massive fire earlier in the week in Elizabeth, New Jersey. It was at this huge building and it required 100 New Jersey firefighters. This is super crazy. And this used to be a Singer sewing machine factory. So I, I'll kind of talk. Uh, the reason I wanted to talk about this is because um, I found the history behind this landmark pretty fascinating. Uh, so it says, okay, over 100 firefighters battled a blaze Friday at a New Jersey industrial park that was home to the Singer Sewing Machine Factory for more than a century. A passerby reported the fire around 5.30 a.m. No one was in the building and no injuries were reported. Uh, two roofs and one wall collapsed, but the fire was burning in several buildings closest to the waterfront, away from the oldest historical portion of the building. The iconic portion of the building is not threatened, nor do we expect it to be. All right, more than 100 firefighters were on the scene. It was four alarms, a classification requiring one of the highest levels of response in the city. Video from the scene shows a building engulfed in flames with firefighters surrounding the structure. A large, the large industrial complex is just south of Newark Liberty International Airport and across a strait from the New York City borough of Staten Island. A huge plume of smoke could be seen from Manhattan. Uh, the cause of fire is under investigation, and the blaze itself could take several days to ex extinguish. In 1873, 1873, the Singer Sewing Machine Manufacturing Company purchased 32 acres at the site and established the factory where it would make the iconic machines for more than a century. It was, one of the, it was the largest workforce plant in the world for a single establishment at the time. Located on Elizabeth's waterfront near Newark Bay, the Singer factory was a powerhouse of the Industrial Revolution, churning out sewing machines in the days when many people made their own clothes instead of buying them in stores. The plant also periodically was pressed into service during wartime, retooling itself to make munitions and parts for military airplanes and machinery during the two world wars, according to the British website uh, Singer Sewing Info. We're going to get to that website in a second. Uh, during World War II with steel and, all right, this is like, all right, this is kind of frozen, and aluminum increasing the need for munitions, the manufacture of sewing machines at the plant was halted from 1942 until 1945. The facility continued to make them in stores. Okay, what is going on with this website? Okay. ABC6 is going rogue on me. I don't know what's, I don't know what's happening. Okay. All right. Um, after the war, the plant was cranking out 10,000 sewing machines a year and as many as 40,000 workers punched a clock there. But the business declined in the 1970s and 80s and the facility shut down in 1982. It was later divided into smaller sections to house small businesses. Public records show the building sold for $1 million in August. I just found this fascinating. I didn't even realize there was, I never even knew this uh, building existed, but I thought that was really just super interesting. Um, and I want to look a little bit more at the history of this factory. And I do own a vintage Singer sewing machine from the 50s. I have a Singer, it's like a Singer 2012, I believe. I'd have to check. I haven't used it in a while, but uh, it's a really beautiful machine. I think this thing is going to like outlive me probably. And what I really found interesting is when I looked into like the old vintage sewing machines, 
back when you kind of had to lo- know how to sew in order to make your own clothing and household textiles, uh, the buying a sewing machine was like the equivalent to paying for a car. Like you typically would buy it in installments because like, you know, these things were so expensive for what, they, like now we're used to paying $200 for a sewing machine. Sewing machines were still like $200 back in like the 18, 1900s, but that was a lot more money to people back then. So people would buy sewing machines like on credit and it was like a very big purchase, which I, you know, I just like, I mean, that's just wild. That's like everyone kind of needing to have a sewing machine now and having the sewing machines be like $10,000. I just think that's fascinating. All right. So let's talk about the factory though. So this is from singersewinginfo.co.uk. And uh, it talks, they they have a page about the Singer factory in Elizabethport, New Jersey. Uh, So it says, in 1857, the first Singer showroom and headquarters were at 458 Broadway in New York, with three manufacturing small plants located around the city, with the original manufacturing plants unable to produce enough sewing machines to satisfy the expanding market, the Singer Company purchased a 32-acre plot of land at Elizabethport on the outskirts of the town of Elizabeth in New Jersey. In 1872, the Singer Manufacturing Company opened a large-purpose uh, state-of-the-art manufacturing facility. At the time, it was said to have been the largest factory in the world devoted to the manufacture of a single product. So here is a picture of the factory, or a little like drawing. On May 7th, uh, 1890, the factory suffered a major fire. Okay, so it's no stranger to fires. Fortunately, much of the stock was left undamaged and the premises were soon rebuilt and production resumed. Uh, During the Great War of 1914 to 1918, the Singer Manufacturing Plant at Elizabethport produced 75 millimeter cannons and 45 millimeter automatic pistols. Quite a change. Other Singer factories at Kilbowie in Scotland and Podolsk in Russia also produced munitions, armaments, and artillery shells. With the start of World War II, the Singer plants in the U.S. and Scotland were again retooled for the war effort. This time they produced armaments ranging from pistols and anti-aircraft guns, I don't even know what that is, to castings for engine piston rings and wooden propeller blades. The major fire at Singer's wood store during the Clyde Bank Blitz meant that the Singer cabinet plant at Thurso, Quebec, Canada, produced fine veneers for fitting onto airplane wings. In Germany, the Singer plant at Wittenberg produced uniforms and armaments for the German military. By the start of World War II, the Singer factory at Elizabethport was employing 5,000 workers, and the now 113-acre factory had 48 buildings with a total of 2.6 million square feet. The factory was an integrated self-sufficient plant producing everything it needed to supply sewing machines. That's so fascinating to me. It also supplied sewing machine parts and the machinery to make the parts to other Singer factories around the world. During this time, shipping throughout Europe was limited and Elizabethport stepped in to provide the family sewing machines and machine parts normally produced at Clyde Bank. With the increase of steel and aluminum needed for the production of munitions, the U.S. production of civilian items, such as sewing machines, was stopped completely. From June 1942 until June 1945, Elizabethport completely ceased making any domestic sewing machines, although it continued to produce spare parts, needles, and limited runs of industrial machines. By the end of August 1945, production resumed and 10,000 Model 15s and 10,000 Model 66 domestic sewing machines were the first to come off the post-war production lines. Activity at the Elizabethport facility dropped off sharply in the late 1970s and 80s when the plant stopped making all but industrial sewing machines. The factory had less than 1,000 employees when its shutdown was announced in February 1982. After the shutdown, the original brick factory building built by Singer was converted to small industrial units. And um, here is, I found this on the, like, some government website. Uh, oh, on the Library of Congress. Here are some old, like, this is super fascinating. Here are some old pictures of the factory grounds and, like, the property. So I thought this was super, it was just super cool to see all the pictures. Okay, this is, all right. 
I'm gonna have to, I guess I'm gonna have to kind of re like, zoom in every time. Okay, so here is the factory. I just think this is super cool to see old pictures. I mean, look at, this is like the apple of the 1800s, you know? And it's interesting how much technology and the world changes to where what was like the hot industry of one era becomes kind of defunct by the next generation. I just think this is super fascinating. But this is what it looks like. I just think it's super, you can kind of zoom in a little bit. So it really shut down in 1982. Here's another picture. I mean, what a look at, you know, just a really interesting look at history here. What do you guys think? I just thought this was interesting that he didn't really know much about this manufacturing building at all. But just super cool. I'm going to mute myself because I have to cough again. All right, but check it out. This is this place was hopping back in the day. I can't believe five thousand employees. That's so crazy. I hope the building is okay though. I, and I wonder, like, I guess they turned it into some just commercial, you know, commercial space. But super interesting. I just wanted to share that with you because I just found it really interesting this week. And I, you know, I heard about the fire and I was like, that's pretty crazy. And then I looked more at the property and I just thought it was pretty, pretty cool.